Good evening, legislators, honored guests, and those watching this meeting online. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020, and I hereby call this special meeting of the Board of Legislators to order to receive the State of County Report from County Executive George Latimer. Will everyone please rise as the Westchester County Ceremonial Unit Color Guard presents the colors. serving us here and around the world and those that are given the ultimate sacrifice for the protection of our freedom and liberty. We also want to remember all those in Westchester County and throughout New York State and our nation that have lost their lives to COVID-19. Thank you and please be seated and we thank the honor guard. This meeting is being held in accordance with Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 202.1 as extended due to the COVID-19 virus. The Governor's Executive Order includes the suspension of in-person public access to meetings as long as the public can view online the meeting, which will be transcribed at a later date. We will now be led in invocations. I call first on Reverend Dr. Verlin D. Williams, my pastor, Union Baptist Church, White Plains, New York. Good evening. Let us pray. Sovereign God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are the only God, creator of heaven and earth, you are the one about whom the psalmist declared, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. In the words of my father, you are God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us this far along the way. We bless your name this evening. How wonderful it is to have the privilege of coming by way of prayer into your presence we ask that you would forgive our sins and transgressions. We thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for life. Thank you for your love for us. And thank you for bringing us to this place. We pray this evening inviting your presence into this place. We pray for the individuals who make up the Westchester County government, for the county executive, George Latimer, and his cabinet staff, for the county legislator, Chairman Ben Boykins, and for all those who serve at every level. We ask that you would continue to give them wisdom and compassion as they carry out their legislative responsibilities. We pray, Father, that they always remember that it was by your providence through the vote of the people that give them their position, and that the authority of which they are stewards was delegated by you, who has all authority, and that ultimately they will be held accountable for how they govern. We ask this prayer in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
of a second invocation will be delivered by Iman Herzat Ambajad Karim. Good evening. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqanakum min zakarin wa unsa wa ja'alakum وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير صدق الله العظيم In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other, not that you may despise each other. Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God is he who is the most righteous of you. And God has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all that things. As we come together, to hear the state of the county address, I am reminded of the teachings of Islam that can help guide us through these difficult times. For Muslims, concern with equality in diversity is not a new issue. In his final sermon, the Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of God be ever upon him, stated that all mankind, all mankind is from Adam and Eve. A white person has no superiority over a black person, nor a black person has any superiority over a white person, except by piety and good actions. The Quran, which we believe to be God's definitive word to humankind, sees diversity as positive, as a part of God's plan. God says in the Quran, O mankind, we have created you from a male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other. Let us pray, O God, help us to come together as one community and take care of each other as we struggle through the pandemic. Let us look out for our neighbors and those who have been most affected by these times of hardship. O God, let us be united Help us to understand one another, to learn about the differences that exist between us, and to embrace with them with open hearts. Help us to unite ourselves and overcome the evils of racism and discrimination. May God give our county executive, George Latimer, and his administration the strength and wisdom to work for the betterment of the county especially in this difficult time during the pandemic. We pray for all of our local legislators that may God grant them all good health and success in their responsibilities so that they may work with justice and compassion. May God help us all. Amen. Thank you. I now welcome Rabbi Adam Bolichin, Westchester Board of Rabbis, to the podium. Elohei haruchot lechol basar, God of every breath, of each and every life. We pray this evening that you bless each of us with health, safety, and hope. Pour out your blessing upon this county upon its inhabitants, upon its leaders, its judges, officers, and officials who faithfully devote themselves to the needs of the public, sustaining our democratic values with strength and vision. Grant our leaders the ability to see fully the needs of the moment, the courage to face uncertainty, and the stamina to weather the storms of this uncertain time. This weekend, Jews around the world will read the story in the Torah of a great flood that destroys the earth. 
Noah alone is chosen to build an ark to save himself, his family, and every species of animal in order to rebuild a better world. God instructs Noah to include in the ark structure something called a tzohar. A commentary explains that this is a window which provides light for those in the ark, as well as a way to see beyond the walls of the ark. Others say that it is a precious stone that gives light to each person inside the ark, providing them with hope and courage to sustain them with the storm while the storm rages around them. The Tzohar offers Noah and his family light and inner strength, while also reminding them to look outwards to see a world waiting for their help in building a new and better society. Tonight, as we gather together to commit to the important work ahead of sustaining our county, may we, through the words of our county executive, George Latimer, feel that bright light shine towards each and every one of us. And may we remember how to access that inner light so that we can shine it outwards beyond the boundaries of family, race, and religion, so that we together can face the darkness of the moment with renewed strength and hope in the coming year. Compassionate one, bless us with the ability to shine the light of justice, equity, and kindness to every individual. We ask that with your mercy, you illumine the earth and all who dwell on it with goodness. During these dark and uncertain times, we pray that you guide us and our leadership with the wisdom and strength to move together towards brighter days ahead. Amen. Thank each of you for those inspiring words during this time of personal loss and anxiety for our country. Once again, this evening, we welcome County Executive George Latimer to the People's House, the chamber of the Westchester County Board of Legislators. 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Board of Legislators after the Board of Supervisors was abolished by the courts. County Executive Latimer served on the Board of Legislators for 12 years and served as chairman for four of those years. We normally have a packed chamber for the State of the County address. However, the COVID-19 pandemic means we are conducting this meeting before the public virtually, over our screaming system, over television, via the administration's Facebook page and YouTube channel. We look forward to a day in the future we can once again hold meetings like this in person. But our responsibility to the public health and safety of the residents of Westchester County remains of a paramount concern. Westchester was one of the nation's first coronavirus hotspots and this government, under the leadership of County Executive George Latimer, with the outstanding guidance of our public health department in cooperation with our federal, state, and local authorities responded swiftly and decisively to contain the spread of the virus. I'm proud of the work the administration has done. I'm proud of the work this body has done, which has not missed a meeting during this pandemic. And I'm especially proud of the work of our dedicated county workforce and board staff who would turn up every day to keep the offices open and parks and roads open. Together, we have been able to provide essential services for the people of Westchester at a time when those services are needed most. This evening, we will hear about the state of our county. It is now my honor to ask Majority Leader Mary Jane Shimsky and Minority Leader Margaret Cuncio to escort County Executive George Latimer into the chambers and to the podium.
welcome County Executive George Latimer to the People's House. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, friends. Good evening, colleagues. Almost seven months to this very day, our county was shaken to its core by the COVID-19 pandemic. It has permeated every aspect of our life here in Westchester County. Even as I stand before you here tonight, this chamber doesn't hold the hundreds of people that it normally would. We're not here together physically, but ladies and gentlemen, we are here and we are united. I have heard many State of the County speeches here in this chamber, and I've given a few of them myself, but the grandness of this room and what it stands for, the People's Chamber, still astounds me. Chairman Ben Boykin, this would not be possible without your leadership, and for that, I give you my gratitude. Thank you. I also want to recognize our county clerk, Tim Idoni, District Attorney Anthony Scarpino, former County Executive Andy Spano, the legendary Herman Geist, former Chairman of the Board of Legislators, and other elected officials. While you might not be with us here in this room, you are with us, and I thank you for your friendship and your willingness to work together. To my executive team, including my senior team, let me first recognize Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins. Ken? Our Director of Operations, Joan McDonald. Our County Attorney, John Nona. Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee. Our Deputy Director of Operations, Emily Saltzman. Our Director of Intergovernmental Affairs, Steve Bass. And my Chief of Staff, Andrew Ferris. Thank you. Thank you all for standing by me. Together, we can accomplish anything. And I want to thank the incredible county employees for their dedication to the people of this county and to each other. These last few months have been trying. We have buried our neighbors. We have seen our loved ones suffer. We've seen fear in our children's eyes. But through it all, we have worked together every day, you and I and all of us in this government, to get this county through dark times. Thank you. Thank you all. Some of you are watching this tonight at home on News 12 or on Facebook Live. Maybe you're tuning into the county's webpage. And I say to you, thank you. Thank you for allowing me and all of us into your home. I've had to tell you many things over the past few months that were difficult. But with you I was, and still am, and always honest. I want you to know that I think of you, and I fight for you every day. My friends, we all know that the storm clouds still hang over us. We know the squall is far from over. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the state of our county is fierce. We are our county, every single one of us. And we are imaginative, and we are resourceful, and we will not let any storm no matter how heavy the rain or how vicious the winds claim victory over us, ever. <laughs> President John F. Kennedy said it best, if not us, who? If not now, when? Before the storm descended on Westchester, we were traveling on a path. <laughs> County Executive Latimer says the deal will help towns, villages, and school districts, too. It's being called the biggest business deal in Westchester in nearly 30 years. The county executive giving the green light on a project to build a billion-dollar biotech center in Valhalla. We remember the living Christopher Ridley at, a, at this place, and we're going to turn it into something different. 
We're going to turn into the celebration of the life of a man who gave his life for the public as a sworn peace officer. Now, there's new technology in place to put the brakes on bridge strikes. County Executive George Latimer promised a year ago to do something. And working with the state, this is the result. Two million dollars in improvements. Current Westchester County Executive George Latimer has submitted legislation to change the term limits for his office. What we're watching now is the need for there to be a more robust balance between the executive branch and the legislative branch. We're seeing an emphasis on making sure that we have an accurate count in a way that I've personally never seen before. And I think what we hope that represents is the best possible effort toward a complete count. LGBT community may be the last one that has been recognized, but that ends now in Westchester County. You are also part of the Westchester Mosaic. I want to welcome you this afternoon to the launch of our food waste recycling program. Food makes up 18% of our solid waste stream. The county executive signed an executive order Friday banning the use of exotic animals such as tigers from performing in shows on county property. We're here at the North White Plains uh, train station to uh, show off our charging stations that have been recently installed to benefit the commuting public. There will be no property tax increase for the first time since 2011. More from WCBS reporter Peter Haskell. Property taxes will go down, the rainy day fund will be increased, and there are no gimmicks. That is the first time in nine years that the county executive, the executive branch, has presented to the legislature a cut in property tax levy. It's only the second time in 19 years. Celebrate the return of uh, the Section 1 high school basketball for both boys and girls playing the playoffs, the final two rounds of the playoffs, the semifinals and the finals, where it belongs right here in uh, Westchester County Center. And we announced the Opportunity Zones program to spur economic development. This program provides tax incentives for investors to reinvest their unrealized capital gains into dedicated opportunity funds. With such valuable benefits at stake, property values are rising as investors and developers scope out these nominated areas potential. We reestablished the Urban County Consortium and the county was awarded federal housing and community development block grants for the first time in 10 years. The Community Development Block Grant Program allows municipalities to apply for funding for infrastructure improvements such as sewer and water treatment, sidewalk rehabilitation, playground and field upgrades, and handicapped accessible vans. Thank you to Planning Commissioner Norma Drummond for making this important initiative happen. We announced nearly $300,000 in state grants for the countywide Shared Services Program. The Shared Services Initiative was designed to help our local municipalities find ways to save taxpayer dollars by sharing resources, technology, and areas of expertise. The Westchester Shares online Shared Services Portal helped to streamline that process by creating a centralized location where each municipality can log on and see what equipment and services may be available to them. The bottom line is this. We must work together if we're ever going to move forward. In the spirit of inclusion, adding to the other boards that already exist, I signed executive orders creating a Westchester County Arab American Advisory Board and an Asian American Advisory Board, part of our continued dedication to assuring that all of us have a voice in county government. During Disability Awareness Month, I signed legislation generated by this Honorable Board of Legislators, creating an advisory council on people with disabilities. The creation of this body will allow for dialogue with people from all circumstances about policy, legislation, and funding priorities. Thank you to the Board of Legislators for your focus on this important issue, and I applaud you. Here in Westchester, we pride ourselves on our diversity. It is one thing to tout this, but it's another thing to use it. Our diversity is our greatest strength, and it is imperative that we ensure that all voices have a seat at the table. We push for the county to move forward with our food scrap recycling program to create a more environmentally sustainable Westchester, all while saving taxpayer money for local municipalities. Food scrap recycling has been a priority for our administration since we first took office. Municipalities will be able to deliver food scraps collected either through curbside collection 
or through a municipal drop-off program, to a transfer station. This greatly changes the future of our waste here in the county. Thank you to Environmental Facilities Commissioner Vincent Kapicki and his team for their work on this program. I maintain my commitment to the environment, earmarking $400,000 for additional funding for environmental initiatives, including stormwater gauges and planting Westchester, a program that will plant trees, greenery, and add community gardens for food security and carbon sequestration. Also, with the help of Energy Conservation and Sustainability Director Peter McCart, we are working toward increasing our purchasing of electric vehicles and establishing electrical vehicle charging stations all around this county. Here in Westchester, we also believe in second chances. Just a few days ago, the U.S. Department of Justice concluded that after five years of monitoring the Westchester County Jail, that the jail has met the conditions to improve the treatment of inmates. Acting U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss said in a statement, quote, the jail is a completely transformed institution, having implemented every provision of the agreement and even creating policies and programs that go beyond what the agreement requires. When it came to rehabilitation, I was proud to support efforts at the Westchester County Jail to have inmates who are also students receive their high school diplomas while in custody. Family, mentors, and other invited guests rose to their feet as the students filed into the jail's Albert Memorial Chapel, clad in blue caps and gowns while pomp and circumstance played. Several of those graduates went on to Manhattan College <clears throat> and are taking college-level courses at no cost to the taxpayers. Thank you to Commissioner Joseph Spano, First Deputy Commissioner Luis Molina, and Deputy Commissioner Leandro Diaz for your commitment to changing lives. Also, we were able to announce that $560,000 in funding was awarded to Westchester's Young Adult Reentry Project. The program, which is run by the Westchester Putnam Workforce Development Board, assists soon-to-be-released incarcerated young adults with job and workforce training and reentry services. As a county, it is critical that we provide the resources necessary to help our youth re-enter society, armed with the tools that are needed for success. We all know and understand the transformative power of education, and we are proud to have to help to transform these young lives. We've done a lot, but I know what resonated deeply with the people of this county was our 2020 budget. The $2.1 billion budget, which was submitted by the executive and passed by the legislature, included a $1 million cut to the Westchester County property tax levy. We, all of us, made a commitment to freeze county property taxes, and we were able to go further and cut the county's property taxes levy by $1 million. And what does that mean in practical terms? A 2% cut in county taxes for the town of Mount Pleasant. 2% cut for the town of Eastchester. 2% cut for the city of New Rochelle. It was a 3% county property tax cut for the town of Mamaroneck, for the town of Newcastle, for the town of Scarsdale. A 4% cut for the town of Bedford. And a 5% cut for the town of Pound Ridge, just to name a few, all impacted by equalization rates. This budget was about the people who live here in Westchester County. It was about giving them some property tax relief and at the same time working to make their county the best it can be by providing services and programs that taxpayers rely on while placing the county back onto solid financial ground. This was the first time in almost a decade that a county executive had proposed a budget that reduced the county property tax levy. The cut to the tax levy was due in large part to the Westchester County Property Taxpayer Protection Act passed by the state legislature, which shares back money to the municipalities and the school district. And we did this together. Together we did this. And as we did all of this, we also never forgot about those county residents who were ready to lay down their lives for our country. As part of Military Appreciation Month, we honored World War II veteran Hilda Lakoff. 
Hilda recently passed away at the age of 99 years. She served in the Women's Army Corps from May 1944 to December 1945, where she worked stationed at the Pentagon. This remarkable woman was granted the Westchester County Distinguished Service Award, the highest honor that could be bestowed upon a Westchester resident. Hilda is a testament to the sacrifices made while we were at war to ensure our freedoms. It was my honor to have the opportunity to meet with her and her family and to thank her for her service on behalf of the nearly one million residents of Westchester County. And Hilda is just one of the many people that we know who have sacrificed for this country. And on this night, we remember them and we thank them for their service. <laughs> Friends, we were doing all of this and more. And then March 3rd happened. We're here at uh, 12 noon on uh, Tuesday afternoon to provide an update on the status of the coronavirus issue here in Westchester County. We are in uncharted territory. In Westchester County, the nation's first containment zone is officially in place. Beginning on Thursday, this one mile radius of New Rochelle will be under a newly enforced ban. The state opened a drive through test center in New Rochelle. George Latimer is the county's top elected official. When you have someone in a mandatory quarantine for 14 days, I mean, what if they don't have 14 days worth of groceries? What well, if they don't have their prescription drugs? That's our job. Our job is to figure out how to get them the food that they need. If there are medicines or anything else under the sun, you know, any of the necessities of life, uh, we have to figure out how to deliver that. Westchester County Executive George Latimer joins me now. How to talk about some of the containment efforts throughout New York State. We bring in Westchester County Executive George Latimer. Real quick, are you getting pressure you feel like from the hysteria? I think what we're trying to do is communicate intelligently with every tool we have and to try to talk to people one-on-one -on -one to calm them down. I know that you asked for volunteers to come forward uh, to help healthcare workers, help support the healthcare system in your county. We've gotten over 120 responses, 90 plus nurses, 20 or so doctors. This is a county of people who are very, you know, well connected, but they're also very smart. They understand what we're facing. We have a we have an issue that we have to resolve. We have to be pragmatic about it. If being in your home for 14 days, that's to do it, that's what we have to do. It wasn't so long ago, and yet it seems like a lifetime ago. As the winds begin to swirl, we took quick action steps. While all of our county departments rose to the task during the COVID pandemic, I especially want to thank all of the workers of the county health department. In the beginning of March, our public health nurses, especially the first three out in the field, Siobhan Jones, Caitlin Doyle Goldsmith, and Kathy Gomez were busy diagnosing the first cases in New Rochelle. They weren't scared. They didn't hesitate. In fact, their words to 60 Minutes were, quote, this is what public health is, and so this is what we do. This is our job. Now, it might be their job, but they are also heroes in every sense of the word, and for that, we thank them. Under the leadership of Health Commissioner Dr. Sherlita Amler, Deputy Commissioner Renee Recchia, and Deputy Commissioner Peter DeLucia, the Health Department has managed and housed initial travelers from China, conducted initial home visits for diagnostic testing, and collected specimens at various facilities with clusters, worked with the state at the Mobile Command Center in New Rochelle, implemented a comprehensive case investigation and contact tracing program, including a field monitoring team and conversion to a new robust case management system, and rapidly identified and contained clusters in numerous settings. I also want to give a special thank you to Assistant Director of Operations Susan Speer and Special Assistant Aviva Meyer for their unwavering commitment to the health and the safety of the people of this county. And while the County Health Department was busy testing, we were working to provide child care to our first responders. Thank you to Special Assistants Blanca Lopez and Rosie Fenizio for your commitment to the littlest of county residents. We worked with the county school districts to help meet their needs. We made changes on the financial side and further opened lines of communications with the municipalities so that all decision makers were getting the information they need. 
Thank you to Special Assistant Ellen Hendricks for your work in keeping every elected in this county connected and informed. We stood with New Rochelle, the original epicenter of this pandemic, and we stood with the Asian American community because here in Westchester, when our brothers and sisters are down, we help them up, always. We never, we never do anything great alone. We were here a little bit earlier today to give out some masks in their distribution, some houses of worship and other uh, targeted areas. When County Executive Latimer came in, I came in at the same time. I think there was a meeting of the minds. I'm joined today with County Legislator Minority Leader Margaret Kunzio, who continues to be a strong advocate for her community. As we know, dealing with emergency services, time is of the essence. Today is our uh, Westchester coronavirus update of the 2 o'clock hour, and we're here in Chappaqua. Legislator Vadat Gashi uh, represents Newcastle on the Westchester County Board of Legislators. Make sure that we continue to invest in our park system and in other areas in this county. I'm here with Legislator Nancy Barr and Trustee Luis Marino uh, to make a donation of masks. I want to commend uh, Mayor Walsh for doing such an excellent job at reopening Larchmont to be prepared for phase two. I'm so happy to be able to help the county executive deliver these masks to my hometown of Osning, where we are known as the volunteer spirited town. The county executive and our health department present the right information on a timely basis on what was going on and the right thing to do. And I think we have that to, to really be proud about. We know that there are a lot of people who are going to have a hard time paying their property tax bills on a timely basis because of all the economic dislocation. I'm happy that we have come up with two ways that will at least help our taxpayers. Not having the pool available to families for, for many years was a real disappointment and having it open is just so tremendous. It's definitely been a time of challenge, but in challenge comes true character and comes leadership. When I was growing up, my mother told me that you are young and you are black and you are male, you have three strikes, don't get caught. It's a shame that anybody has to say anything like that to their children. We need law enforcement, but law enforcement alone will not make us safer. Front end investments in children and families and social service play a vital role. At the very start, we were able to distribute hand sanitizers and face masks to faith-based organizations in the Greenberg area. Government exists to serve the people, not the other way around. And government needs to work in cooperation. The people of this county thank the Board of Legislators for all of your hard work during this very difficult time. It's a little hard to hear this when we don't have a room full of people, but we all owe the Board of Legislators a round of applause. We called on all available New York State licensed nurses and physicians assistants to step forward and help us. We unveiled Ribbons of Remembrance, a monument that the public can take part in to remember the residents of this county who have died of COVID-19. Visitors are encouraged to write the name of someone they have lost on the ribbon and tie it to one of two trees or the rope structure placed at Lenoir Preserve in Yonkers. This is a chance to do something tangible, to remember that person in those quiet moments when it's you, the remembrance of your loved one, and nature. We reached out to the youngest people of this county and spoke directly to them about this pandemic, even taking the time to read them some books over video and reminding them how to properly wash their hands. We proposed legislation to ease the financial burden on Westchester's residents in light of COVID-19, amending the Westchester County tax law to authorize towns in Westchester County to waive penalties for the late payment of county taxes, county district taxes, and assessments. Thank you to Governor Cuomo for agreeing that county residents needed the extra time, and thank you to the Board of Legislators for working with me to do what is best for county residents. All of this time, we kept the dialogue open with the residents of this county. We hosted a series of town halls focusing on various issues and how we as a community can build back stronger. One of these town halls was focused on economic recovery, 
where we fielded questions from our neighbors on what we can do and are doing to jumpstart Westchester's economy. Our Economic Development Director, Bridget Gibbons, is using creativity and her can-be-done attitude to spur our actions to the next level of business in Westchester. And I also want to thank Sherry Rosen Asher for her work in keeping the lines of communications open with the Chambers of Commerce in this county. During the summer months, we announced a comprehensive plan to address food insecurity. With school out and many camps not open due to COVID-19, there was an unprecedented need for food assistance for families who are struggling in Westchester County. And that need is expected to grow over the next few months. Thank you to Diane Atkins for your work on this very important policy area. Westchester County Government developed the Westchester Food Security Initiative, which provided $4 million in additional support to food pantries, restaurants, and food delivery services through four different programs. The funding consists of CARES Act dollars with additional state and federal money for the COVID-19 response. When people were stuck in their homes and had limited recreation, I opened up our county parks, including the Westchester County-owned golf courses. We were and are balancing the desire of those who want to enjoy the outdoors, along with the priority of stopping the spread of the virus. These courses served as a test case of our ability to balance both priorities, and in that test, we succeeded. <laughs> Masked golfers, observing social distancing practices, were able to find peace and comfort on the golf courses. Bikers were able to do the same on bicycle Sundays. Our summer camps opened, and our pools and our beaches welcomed summer. Were things different? Well, of course they were different. But we adapted to the new normal, and we all worked together to make sure it happened successfully. I thank our Parks Department, especially Commissioner Kathy O'Connor, First Deputy Commissioner Peter Tartaglia, for a tremendous summer. Their professionalism... <laughs> Their professionalism and their care allowed us to enjoy the outdoors safely. When it came to reopening in the fall, I created a working group to assist local school districts with the reopening transition and to provide assistance and public health support to protect our schools, teachers, staff, and most importantly, our students. The goal of that task force that I want to thank Community Mental Health Deputy Commissioner Joe Glazer was to help create a more efficient way to provide feedback on common issues that could arise, such as the bulk purchasing of personal protective equipment, suggesting vendors for plexiglass dividers and signage, offering assistance with contact tracing, and developing a standardized frequently asked document, questions document. It has been a long seven months. Honestly, this has been the largest uh, you know, system that we've ever dealt with, with the volume of stuff we're ordering and, and, and putting through this facility. That is a fantastic example, though, of how much is going to nursing homes with COVID positive. I guess the most simple question is, you're, you're in the hospitality business, you're a small business owner, restaurants, how are you holding up? We're located here today in the village of Portchester on South Regent Street on the site uh, that is under construction for senior housing. I want to extend my congratulations to the graduating class for the year 2020. It is a commencement. It's the beginning of something new. It's going to be a new normal. It's not going to be the old normal. What are some of the things in running the town that will, that is or will be different? It's a day for us to remember that we're not free until the stain of racism is gone from each of us as individuals, much less as the country at whole. We're here in Dobbs Ferry at uh, this wonderful facility, Hudco, which is a very innovative work environment. We thought of no person better to discuss the issue of prayer and faith uh, at a time where we need both secular leadership and uh, spiritual faith than Father Joseph McShane, who is the president of Fordham University. Uh, I'm particularly proud of the compassionate leadership that you've shown to the people of the county. Just like in a war, the veteran that's on the front lines takes the bullets. In this war, it's the people in the health department, the people in the EMS who are out there uh, facing this, uh, this disease head on and trying to help and save people. And we can say thank you in a hundred ways. We can do a little sign and put it out there and take pictures. Of, uh, of your kids and yourself in, in various ways that you're saying thank you and post it on social media. And let me give you the Westchester County.
appreciate everything you do. Our uh, conversation this morning is with a person who happens to live in Westchester, but she has a, a very important job that affects this whole region. She is the uh, president of Metro North Railroad. COVID hit us hard and hit us quickly. The program for Ribbons of Remembrance is very simple, to recognize those who've died amongst us. So you put your message on the purple ribbon and then you can take the purple ribbon and hang it behind us. My good friend, the Senate leader of the New York State Senate, Andre Stewart Cousin. On behalf of all of us in Westchester County, I think your, your leadership is outstanding. You know, I miss you in the Senate, but uh, I think you're certainly, uh, as I said, much, much, much more um, needed in the role you're playing, so thank you. From the Townhouse Diner in White Plains, look at you rubbing it in our face here in New York City, but we're happy for you. <laughs> How are things going over there? Well, thank you. We hope this comes <laughs> We hope this comes soon to you as well. A cup of coffee in a diner in the morning is heaven, Rosanna. But even as COVID, COVID raged on, we also worked. We worked to ensure that with a smooth voting on election day, 2020, while the Westchester Board of Elections is state controlled, we are all in this together. I want people to vote. I want them to be engaged. So do you, and we are here to help. That is why we released a four point plan aimed at offering assistance to the state directed Westchester County Board of Elections in advance of election day, 2020. The plan includes assistance with additional polling place inspectors, replacement polling sites, and promotion for early voting, all of which was gratefully accepted and implemented. Our nation was founded on the principle of free and fair elections. Without them, nothing else truly matters. We were busy working, we had our heads down, and we were inching forward, trying to return to a calm time. And then, that was when the storm raged even more furiously. In the thick of the COVID pandemic response, we were further tested by a crisis of the soul, the murder of George Floyd in May, and what that means for our society and what that means for our future. As I've said from the beginning, that man was murdered, but we are not gonna let him die in vain. Between George Floyd's death and the hate incidents countywide surging, we announced the formation of a police training reform group of various stakeholders to review procedures and policies at the County Police Academy. We know that it is not enough to rally, it is not enough to express heartfelt anger and frustration. And it isn't really realistic for a white man to try to channel what's being felt in the black community or any community of color. What is important for me to do, given my responsibilities, is to have an appropriate governmental response so that it is not just about the rally of the moment, it is about what we can do as a government to improve. The working group is comprised of county and local police professionals, individuals who serve on the Human Rights Commission, on the county police board, members of the African American clergy and justice activists who have all spent months reviewing in detail all of the procedures and the policies that are used at the county police academy to train new recruits and to provide in-service training for those that are already working in law enforcement. And we've tasked that committee with so much more including three members of your body that serve on that committee to bring not only your insight to the deliberation of the committee, but to hopefully bring some of those ideas into this chamber where you can create new legislation. I think we all owe those members of our task force a round of applause for the incredible work that they are doing on this very sensitive topic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long seven months it's been a long 2020. It's not over yet. Plans we had were sidetracked. Ships have gone astray, but we find our way back because that is what we always do. Recently, I was able to stand with Mount Vernon Mayor Sean Patterson Howard and Land Tech VP and New York Jets legend Marty Lyons to break ground on the Memorial Field Reconstruction Project. After years of uncertainty, the moment finally happened and it was truly a government at its best, working for the people whom we serve. I commend the partners in government from the city, county legislature, and the state for their joint efforts toward progress. And I want to particularly single out the Honorable Judge Lyndon Williams for his exceptional commitment to this project.
I received my graduation diploma on that field, and soon Mount Vernon students will get that same honor. We were, labeled, we were able to allow media production back into the county, long a hot destination for the film and television industries. It's not surprising that production companies want to be in Westchester County. With a small commercial production just completed in the village of Mamaroneck, a music video shoot scheduled for Playland, and several other productions considering locations here, Westchester is on its way back. In an effort to stabilize communities and families in the county impacted, by the COVID-19 pandemic, we launched the Community Build Back Program. The umbrella program has four prongs under it. Two, utilize HUD money, the Red Stop Eviction Project, and the Red Rent Help Project. And two separate ones utilize $10 million in CARES Act money, the Blue Priority Homeowners Initiative, and the Blue Small Business Landlord Initiative. We also set aside $10 million in funding to create an initiative to support small businesses and nonprofits facing challenges due to COVID-19. Westchester County Business First is a new grant program designed to offer immediate financial relief to organizations in Westchester that have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. The program is being administered by the County Office of Economic Development and is open to businesses and nonprofits that employ 99 or fewer people and whose primary business location is in Westchester County. The Westchester, the Westchester County Industrial Development Agency continues to be a driving force in spurring economic development in the county. Recent projects represent a total private investment in the county of approximately $1.6 billion and more than 2,800 in new residential units. Our administration is taking a new approach to affordable housing by keeping a record of all the units that have been created as affordable to make sure they remain affordable for the prescribed periods. We've also created a system of updating our affordable housing database as developments progress from the funding stage to construction to completion. We're focused on housing because there are too many families struggling with housing costs across this county. Our work on this is certainly not done but a total of 2,089 affordable housing units have been proposed, approved, or constructed since we took office on January 1st, 2018. We are analyzing ways to save money by consolidating our sewer districts. And Deputy Commissioner Mike Kaplowitz is leading that effort brilliantly and thoroughly. And we're very proud of Mike and that initiative. When it came to the census, we funded over 15 community organizations for census, census outreach and awareness. The winning part for the people of this county is that we have exceeded our 2010 response rate. And as well, we exceeded our 2000 response rate. Across Westchester, people have worked tirelessly to ensure a robust census participation <clears throat> Westchester will soon be on the books, being home to one million residents, and the opportunity that that opens up is tremendous and tangible. Just a week ago, we released our 2021 proposed capital county budget. In it, I proposed an additional $231.8 million in new appropriations. This includes $138.8 million for the general fund, $80.4 million for the sewer and water districts, 1 million for the refuse district and 11.6 million for the airport. Additionally, the county capital program supports over 2,000 permanent jobs within the county, which comes at a critical time when the region's economy has been negatively affected by the COVID pandemic. Despite the challenges we have faced this year, we are continuing to invest in the county's capital infrastructure. This is not only important to maintain our assets, but also in creating jobs within the county. With our partners in the construction industry, we will award over $130 million in construction contracts in 2020, representing 31 projects throughout the county. A number of these projects have been recommended by county legislators. And we have incorporated your advocacy into the plans that we have submitted to you for your review. During the pandemic, the rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch, have all affirmed the county's ratings for the 2020 bond issue. What that shows is that we are strong, 
We can weather this storm. Can we weather it forever? No. But at this time, considering the path we have traveled through the pandemic, our rudder is staying the course. We close the 2020 budget with no layoffs, no furloughs, and no service cuts. We now turn our attention to the 2021 budget. What is in store is still unclear. Much depends on what happens in Washington and in Albany. But I can tell you we're spending long days and nights advocating for federal and state help, and we won't stop until we do what is best for each of us. We yearn for the raging storm to calm. We long for still waters. The challenges we face are many and great, and they will take time. But I'm vowing to you what I know you and your own heart have vowed to yourself. These challenges will be met. We pick ourselves up, we dust ourselves off, and we begin the journey of rebuilding our country, and that starts right here in our county. I love it when a plan comes together, and not just because it's a successful event and activity, but because of the people, the young kids that are gonna be helped, the families that are gonna be helped. This is a great day for Austin. I'm glad I could be a little part of it. I do again wanna introduce Warren Lucas, who's the town supervisor of North Salem. The leadership that uh, this administration has shown in uh, fighting this pandemic in Westchester County is really phenomenal. The leader of the city of Peeksco is their dynamic young mayor, Andre Brady. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say first, thank you to the County Executive George Latimer for such great leadership. Your, your administration has been a great help as we get through this process. It's now my pleasure to introduce our County Executive George Latimer. George has been at the forefront of this fight against COVID-19 and, and positioning himself in the county as allies with our public schools. There is nothing more important to a resident of this county than the lives of their children. What I have found with the women in George's direct office, plus the women commissioners, deputy commissioners, is we bring our experience. We leave any preconceived notions or egos at the door. If we can do something as simple as washing our hands, making sure that we socially distance, and wearing a mask, and you know what? That's what we have to do. Wear a mask! And this way, you'll be safe and I'll be safe. Tonight our topic is economic development. For the next hour we're going to be together here on Facebook and we're going to have a chance to talk about the issue of housing. But tonight our conversations are going to focus on issues that affect senior citizens. Across the globe, if you're Asian, if you're from Africa, if you're from South America. What makes America great is that we embrace all of those stories. We are happy to be Italian Americans and we're happy to be part of a country that welcomes all of those ethnicities together because that's what makes us better, smarter. 40% of Westchester residents think they don't matter? Don't be one of them. Fill out the census. Completing your census form helps Westchester residents get counted. Youth employment is really critical for young people that are uh, particularly of low income status. And as you get ready to put your gear up, you hear someone watching the television saying, something's happening over at the World Trade Center. And you know that's where you're going to go. We've agreed to a lease on a building that will be newly constructed to serve the people of Westchester for family court purposes. It was the right strategy to regionalize court presence in different parts of the county. We got through to the finish line again. My colleagues, my friends, the state of our county is fierce. Fierce. The risk takers, the makers, the doers are always the one that carries us to prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, we walk together down this road. We won't always agree. But that's not a requirement, because I know that each of you, as do I, care deeply about the people that we serve. And we can do that best together. 
together on this journey. We pick ourselves up, we dust ourselves off, and we move forward. Together, united. Thank you very much. Outstanding state of the county. Our county is through. That was very powerful and forward thinking. And we want to thank you coming to the people's house and giving us the state of our county. Thank you very much. Honor, thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, do you have a motion to adjourn? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. I move that we adjourn the special meeting. Short roll call, please. Um, uh, the clerk is coming up. Do the short roll call. I was going to do it, but. Huh? Um, Majority Leader Shimsky? Aye. Minority Leader Kunzio? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman, the motion passes 16-0. Uh, Thank you very much. The special meeting, October 27th, 22nd, 2020, is adjourned at 8.02 p.m. Thank you.